Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service this morning on a beautiful, sunny but breezy day outside, and great to be together here this morning. Let's just open our service here this morning in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do come before you this morning, and we just thank you for those truths already that we could sing about you, of how wonderful and marvelous you are, that you have everything in your control, everything throughout the world. We, in our human eyes, sometimes we look at things, whether it's in our own life or situation or health or politics or many different things, we don't understand some things that are going on, and yet we know that you have everything in your control, and so we trust you for these things. And so we thank you again that we can meet this way, that we can meet freely. We thank you for the freedom that we have in this country to meet this way. And so for, for that, we thank you for those that have served in different military levels in the past and have fought for our freedom. We thank you for those Christians that serve in different levels of government, and we pray that your influence can flow through them into policies and, and laws that are being made. We pray for fellow Christians around the world that don't have this freedom, but we pray and, and encourage them as well because we know that they serve the same God as we do. And so, Lord, now we invite you to be here with us and that you would be honored and blessed in everything that we do here this morning. We thank you for this past week and the beautiful weather you've been giving us and, and just watching over us in all many different ways. So we pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. It is 
Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Um, as per the usual, I had to leave my better half at home because she's taking care of a grandmother whose family is off on holidays. And uh, so Leanne is um, the um, home care helper for this one family, and, the, and uh, she's there, and I'm here. And Daniel and Alicia are doing their thing. Lene and Logan are getting ready to go with their church in Salmon Arm to Mexico on a missions trip, and life is kind of going, right? But it's th I'm thankful I could come. Um, it was kind of interesting. We were down in Washington State heading down to a, a, a family reunion my, on my mom's side, this extended family reunion, 80 people that I've hardly seen for years all got together. But on our way there, we'd stop for lunch, and my phone rang, and it was this Bow Island number. And I went, oh, and Leanne goes, what do you answer? Well, it's Bow Island. You never know. So I called, and Louise said, hey, can you come? And I said, so sure, I'm free that weekend. So it was good to come. Just wanted to give you a quick update first on uh, our ministry trip to Ukraine. And Daniel and Alicia were both up in the Edmonton area at Brightwood Camp ministering for the month of July, which made it possible for Leanne also to go. And so we went to uh, Ukraine for three weeks, and uh, greetings from my family, of course, but also from the church, from Pastor Misha and others. Uh, they send very warm greetings to you as a body and say thank you and, and our, uh, for your love and care and participation in the ministry there. And um, it was a eventful trip, I might say. Next slide, please. Now, uh, we went, uh, was the last, last weekend in uh, June. We headed for Ukraine. We landed in Kiev. It was 37 degrees, and uh, it was straight into cultural adaptation because we went and caught a train out to Sumy, which is an, a five-hour train trip. And the train, our wagon, there's 60-some 60 yeah, 60 people, uh, 37 degrees, and no air conditioning, and two small windows open. So it was just, hey, welcome home kind of feeling. And three of us, uh, next slide please, uh, Val, who's in the red, Leanne and myself, we're all old teammates. Val served with us in Sumi uh, in, from 2000 to 2004. So for us, it was like, oh yeah, right back to reality. And Carmen, who's Val's friend who came along, she was kind of, oh my goodness, what's going on? But it was good. It was a tremendous time for all four of us uh, to be just part of what God is doing there. And um, the, the news that you don't hear about being the war and everything else, it is still going on. There's a, we call it the frozen conflict. There's constant fighting, constantly people dying, constantly people being wounded down. And that's about 400 kilometers south of where we were. So the rest of the country is at peace, you might say, in a kind of interesting sort of way. But so for us, it was, we were totally, call it safe where we were. But it was a challenge, uh, just working and serving under that, they know there's this constant pressure of the possibility of what could happen from the east. Next slide, please. So a lot of things happened. One of the reasons why we went when we did was so we could participate in this event at the beginning of the summer. Every summer they have this. And it's exciting to see such a witness. The uh, churches in the area, there's four churches this time, came together. The center of the city, the city is 300,000 people. This is the central river, central bridge, right in the middle of town. Uh, they hold a service on the banks among all the sunbathers and then have a baptism service. And 30 people got baptized this morning, that morning. And it was exciting to watch, exciting to see this witness going on in the midst of all that everything else is going on. God's church is continuing to grow and to work and to serve and to reach out uh, to the communities. Next, please. Now, the camp, 10 days of 130-plus kids, uh, close to half who've never been to church, non-church backgrounds, which, you know, creates an interesting dynamic. Um, just... We're there, and we're serving in a variety of roles. Our primary role was we did the English portion. Every day we were doing English lessons and for different levels and because everybody studies English to some degree in school, so this is part of their outreach and opportunity, part of the draw. So that was our role. Next, please. But we also did a whole pile of other stuff. Leanne and the girls especially did the English part. I'm not a great teacher. I'm more of the get, you know, sit down, shut up, listen person, right? 
or no, you don't say that. Sit down, please be quiet. Listen carefully. There, there. But um, it was a great ministry tool, and they, the girls did a great job, a really good job. I was very impressed, very thankful that they were able to, to pull it off, and they really connected at various levels with the campers and with the staff. Next, please. Now, in there, uh, a lot of ministry there is relationships and building new relationships and old relationships and just being part of what is taking place, coming alongside and encouraging and um, filling in where necessary. And that was one of our biggest roles. And, you know, I, we went there not really knowing what we were going to do per se, knowing that we would be doing a lot. And God did that, and God gave us all the strength and ability to do it. We were, like the lady said, they were very thankful. It wasn't like last summer. Last summer it was 37 to 40 degrees every day. This summer it was only 28, so it was much more bearable for the heat, and we were able to minister effectively. Next, please. Also, uh, <laughs> lots of fun experiences. Um, you know, one thing I appreciate about going back to Ukraine, you, you kind of lose your sense of um, safety, I guess. You do things that you just know you can never do here. <laughs> like Alexei, he's a friend of ours. Some of you know him. He's a deacon in the church. You know, we were in, we were in Sumi for the day for services, going to church, and went over to their place for supper in the evening. And then he wanted to take us home. And he has this old car, which his son told me cost them less than two new bicycles. So it's this old car. It's, an old, it's called a Muscovich, which is even worse than a Lada. Um, been sitting in somebody's garage and he needed a ministry car so he's got this car and as you can see we were kind of packed in there the girls said they could feel every single bump in the road through the floorboards and we're driving and the car you hit 50k and it starts to shake like crazy I said Alex say because he drove this to a city 30 kilometers away in the morning for ministry I says has this always been happening he go like literally always oh, been happening you know and he goes oh no it just happened after church this morning I'm, i haven't had time to see which tire is loose um, <laughs> you know it's 30k out to the camp there's nothing between us and the camp except some village you know it's late sunday evening i'm thinking okay lord we're in your hands so you know we're just driving along through the potholes it was a great experience it was lots of fun um next please you know Zip lines. This is, the guys, they wanted to do a zip line. Every camp you do this day hike, they wanted to do something special for the team. So that's the swimming area by the camp. But we wanted to do something special, so we wanted to cross the river, 65, 65 people across the river. But by a zip line, well, how are you going to do that? Well, we're just going to string a rope. And again, I was thinking, oh, the insurance possibilities here. But so we had to get it tight. And as you can see on the picture on the left, that's the zip line. To get it that tight, we, you know, we brought it through a carabiner around a tree and then tied it to the bumper of the car and then just pulled forward till it was snug. And thankfully, everybody was able to make it across the river without getting too wet. But I just, you know, it's, sometimes it's just fun. <laughs> you know? But those are the kinds of things that are just interesting because it's a different world. It's a different way of doing things. Uh, and you have to adapt. And you have to step back and say, okay, Lord, um, I'm really not used to this. And I mean, I was used to it, but... It's, I, I got to get back into this mode. And I got to trust that you're going to work through it and that you're going to work through it all. And he did. And it was amazing to see how God worked in the lives of, of teens there. Many of the teens who come, it's a, it is a repeat process. They come back to camp year after year. But the gospel is being, uh, it's growing in their lives. And they come to a point where they say, I have to make a decision. And we see that happening and see them going forward. It's, it's a real blessing. Next, please. Another part of our ministry was just connecting with uh, those we've ministered with and ministered to. Um, you know, there's, there's African students there in the city that I have ministered with over the years. Uh, it was great. One of the leaders there was at the baptism, was able to connect with him. Leanne was connecting with ladies and young ladies that she had been ministering to and with for over the years. Um, and just le leadership. Of course, we had to do a shishlik. You know, you got to cook the guys, all the guys. It's amazing. It's a cross-cultural thing. If there's fire and meat, men just congregate. You know, it's a good time to fellowship. But through all of that, again, we're just seeing how God is faithful and God continues to work and God continues to move things forward. Uh, the, in the big picture, uh, things are as, they, as good as they can be. In the little picture, there's lots of struggles, lots of challenges, 
day-by-day -day, um, difficulties, both economically, politically, legal effect, like the young people, um, Ukraine's border has now been open to, to Europe, so the young people are moving very quickly into Europe to work, et cetera, which affects the church. Uh, the young people are leaving. What do they do? How do they, you know, it's all of these things are happening. It's a challenge for them, so you can pray for them as they, they face these news. That's part of the reason why uh, we did a camp, kids and teens program at the same time, kind of a dual program on site because of the fact that there was lack of staff, lack of people to, to serve, but they could, you know, 10 days, okay, let's just do it. So different challenges that they're facing that they're needing to, God needs to give them wisdom for. Next, please. So again, thank you for your support for the ministries there and for our, our ministries. Um, they are, they're continuing on. I'm, I'm in the same role of, of reaching out, facilitating ministry from this side to that side and from that side to this side and uh, being a, doing a lot of different things in this fall. Uh, yeah, we are looking to see where God wants us to go next, but at this time, we know that this is where we're to be and what we're to do. So for the next coming year, two years, we know this is our role in our ministry. So thank you for your support for that, and thank you for standing with us. Now, in all of these travels, we, we were over in Ukraine. Okay, close the slide. We were over in Ukraine. Uh, after that, we went back to, came back here, and then I was down in the States with my relatives. And all of these things, it has been interesting for me. It has been a, um, how would you say it, a little bit of an eye-opener as, you know, the, you, you know, sometimes we feel we get lost in our turmoil in what's going on in our world, and we, we fail to, it's, we need to step back and look at the bigger picture. And that's what happened for me this past few months, is stepping back and seeing the bigger picture and how in the world sense, there is a lot of turmoil, and there's always been turmoil, always has been. Since the time began, there's always been some sort of turmoil. But now it's so much more global. You listen to the news, you see what's happening, and, and you know, if, so, if somebody shoots somebody in some other part of the world, we know about it within half an hour. Right, so we are very connected in these ways. I'm down talking to my relatives, my, Amer my American relatives, they just love our, they have an interesting perspective on our politics up here, put it that way. Uh, and I have an interesting perspective on politics down there. So it was, it was it, it's all of these things coming together and you sit there and go, Lord, what are you doing? You know, what is God doing in the midst of this? Because he is doing something. God has been and will be and is doing something in this world. And it's exciting to see, but it's also a challenge for us in our, just our day-to-day -day lives. And so uh, this morning, I would like to just ask us to take a few minutes to look at 2 Peter chapter 3. Let's just turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, and I'm going to do a, basically the big, big picture flyover. Because I want us to, to be reminded of a couple of truths as uh, we go you know, through our summer, through our fall, through our, our, our days to come. Let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. And we're going to look at the whole chapter. One in verse 1 and 2. This is now, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you, in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder, that you would remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandments of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. So Peter, let's, let's set the situation. Peter, he knows he's coming to the end of his days. He knows that time is short. He's written, this is his second letter, he's writing to the church to encourage them, to challenge them, to remind them of that which he and others taught, to remind them of God's grace. If we, if we look back through First and Second Peter, uh, he teaches of God's grace, of God's mercy, of God's uh, direction, of, of how to live in a world that is against you, how to live in the midst of persecution and change and challenge. And so he is... He is bringing this all to a close in this last chapter. And he's saying, brothers and sisters, please remember that which you have been taught and hold on to that as you move forward. Knowing this, verse 3, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, falling after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the father, uh, fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. And... 
Here he reminds the believers of what the rest of the world is thinking. You know, they're not thinking the same as you are. They're looking at life through a different lens. They're looking at life in a way that is counter to what, the way you are looking at life. And now, remember that many of the people he's writing to, they saw Christ resurrected. And every day after Christ left, was uh, returned to heaven, they have been waiting for his return. And they've been talking about it, just like we do. And yet, nothing has happened, just like we wait. And they're saying, and those around them are saying, well, whatever. You know, you say he's coming back. Well, where is he? He's been gone for 20 years, 30 years. Nothing's changed, you see. And so he's reminding them that those who do not know Christ, when we read these verses, he's reminding them that they are confident and dismissive. They're confident in themselves and dismissive of those of us who... um, believe okay there's a, there's almost a sense of contempt for those of us who believe why because nothing has changed nothing is different so what you're saying is false or it doesn't matter it doesn't count and things are just going on as they are so why should i listen to you and that is so that why so that they can follow after their own lust and let's say um Interesting, when I was reading up on this, there's a couple different um, uh, translations. They say, it escapes their notice. In verse, uh, verse 5, it says, when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heaven existed, heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world, world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. It escapes their notice. Other translations say, um, deliberately forget or deliberately ignore the fact. You see, it's the picture Peter is saying is a, a deliberate turning from that truth. Okay, so we look at the world and we go, wow, you know, I was out in the mountains. It's just beautiful. What God created, how, how, what he has done. You stand out there. um, I kind of miss this when in Cochrane because there's all those lights. You come down here, you step out of town like 20, you know, 100 steps at nighttime and the starry sky is just amazing, right? And we look at that and we say, God, what have you done? It's so amazing. But they have turned from that. They have decided that that isn't true. They decided that that isn't uh, what has happened. And therefore, they're contemptuous of those, those of us who believe that God did create this, that God did put this together. And the idea of a creator in creation is either ridiculed as a fairy tale or myth, and therefore, it's just, you know, brushed aside. Or... We've, you have people who are basically, in a sense, unaware. They've just listened to the teaching that has been taught of evolution and other things and accepted it. And they haven't considered the claim that there's a God who has created the heavens and the earth. So you have this contempt, contemptuous attitude or just a indifferent, unaware attitude. But that's because they have turned away and it escapes their notice. And the, the question is, see, if, if we have a creator, if there is no crea- creator, then everything is by chance, and I'm not accountable to anybody. But if there is a creator who created this and us, then I'm accountable to my creator. And there are eternal consequences. But if there isn't one, I can do what I want. And see, when we turn away from the fact of God, It opens up all kinds of doors for whatever I feel like doing and a lack of accountability. And this is the world that we live in. This is the world that Peter lived in. Those who say, you know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't count, and it escapes their notice, but it doesn't escape ours. You see, we know that there is truth. We know that there is a God. We know there is a creator, and we know that he is in control. We know that... He will carry out his plan. 
in this world, in this earth. Um, it is a, it is that that truth that we hold on to in the midst of our turmoil, both our personal or global turmoil. We know that God is working out His plan step by step. Now let's now verse eight and nine is something that we. Peter is like the, this linchpin of a verse. Do not let this one fact escape your notice, speaking to us, beloved, those of us who follow Christ, those of us who believe in him, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promises, some count slow, slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. You know, when we're in the midst of something heavy, and difficult. I'm, I'm in Ukraine, and I'm, I'm, I'm listening to Misha, and he's, asking, he's talking to me, he's, he's giving me an update, he's more just sharing his heart. I, I don't have a lot of wisdom to give him, it seemed like, but as I'm listening, I'm thinking to myself, uh, some of these issues, they just won't go away. You know, and I, I'm praying, Lord, can you just finish this? I mean, maybe just rapture us right now, or at least deal with this problem, but the issues just won't go away. And I had to step back from that and say, okay, Lord, this is your plan. And this is your timing. Even when I look around the world and I wish, I pray for the rapture, I pray for God, Christ's second coming, I know that he, I mean, I, you and I, we, our hearts break for those who do not know Christ, our friends, our neighbors, our family members. How much more does God's heart break? You know, at some point, he will say that enough is enough time, it's done. But he is the one who will, will say that. And if my heart is breaking for someone who is not, does not know Christ, how much more is his? So I have to remember that. The Lord is not slow about his promise. Everything will happen on time. You know, in Galatians chapter 4, Paul is teaching of when Christ came, he says, in the fullness of time, God sent his son. In the fullness of time. You know, and when God sent Christ to be a babe, you know, during the time of the Roman Empire and all of that was going on. He didn't send them during the time of the Babylonian Empire. He didn't send them in the time of the British Empire. He sent them during the time of the Roman Empire. And it was the perfect timing for a message to be spread across the known world at that time. See, God knew and God planned it. God is doing the same thing now. He's not slow about his promise. When we read his word, we can trust his promises. And he will fulfill his promises when it is time. So we need to be aware. We need to live as believers who are aware, who are encouraged, who are standing and trusting. And we also need to be active. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. Since all of these things are, are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for, hastening the coming day of the Lord, because of which the th heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, because of all of this, verse 14, therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. Now that is through Jesus Christ, we are only made spotless and blameless. And regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Be thankful that God is patient, both for us and for others. Just as our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you, and also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of Scripture to their own destruction. False teachers. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guards, so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men, and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be active as believers, as followers of Christ. Whatever stage we're at, we need to be active. We need to be active and, and diligent in following him, especially in these days, in these days that are difficult. It's, we cannot be complacent and just fall into our routine. You know, it's a, it's a sense of having a mindset of growing. Now those, like, those of us who are, um, when we're in a profession, all of us, we have some sort of profession, some sort of work we do, all of us are always in grow mode, right? 
Which of you as farmers still use a horse and a plow? Anybody? No. How about a, uh, well, let's see. My dad had an old Dites tractor that could pull about a 12-foot disc. Probably not anymore either, right? Irrigation. Row, row pipes. The ones that you have to push. Hmm, no, we've changed that too. You see, we're always in go mode. We're always in grow mode. We're always learning. I in my profession, you in your profession, we're always learning and growing. Motors change. Opportunities change. We're always doing that. We have to have the same mindset in our Christian walk, that we are growing and learning. See, Paul, Peter says, growing grace and knowledge. Growing in grace and knowledge. This illustration right here that uh, Cindy had was an excellent illustration. You see, not being blinded by sin, but asking God to take away our blinders. Take away and then give us the strength and wisdom to act on and grow and learn and change. You know, the uh, fruit of the Spirit is something that we teach kids all the time. It's a great verse to teach you to love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Well, the question is, is us, for us as believers, do I have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, compassion, etc.? And if I don't, why? That's a question I ask myself, especially when my kids tell me, Dad, you've got to work on your compassion. You're a little... What? It's okay. You know? But yeah, I ask myself, Lord, do I have, or when I'm feeling stressed, why don't I have peace? When I'm feeling frustrated, why don't I have joy? You see, and those are questions I need to ask God. I have to, and when he, I have to ask, I have to be willing for him to show me, and I have to also be willing to ask him for the help. See, I don't have to walk this road alone. The Holy Spirit is within me. He will give me the strength. He will give me the wisdom. He will give me the direction I need in order to deal with these things. I'm not doing it myself. So we need to do this. We're growing in grace, growing in knowledge, learning more of the Word, learning more about our Savior, learning more about how we can uh, share Him with others. The world has changed. How we have to communicate changes also. So we're learning and growing as we go forward in our walk with him. Because we trust his promises. We trust that God is working and will work. And we're going to hold on to that. It's a, you know, a few years ago, when uh, a few years into Ukraine, I was speaking. And uh, the translator, as she translated for me, con like the whole time she looked at me quizzically, as in, because what she was hearing was new to her. And I thought it was just pretty normal stuff. And afterwards, she and I had a conversation. And she said, John, in our culture, we're taught to serve God because we fear him. We fear losing our salvation if we do something wrong. We fear that he will punish us because we have, done, we have not done the right thing. And our, constantly, our Christian lives are lived on this edge of fear. Not the fear and respect of him as a holy God, but the fear of, of someone coming with the big stick. And what I had been teaching was, we need to serve him because of love. Why? Because of what he has done for us. The great gift of salvation. The great gift of eternal life. The great gift of the Holy Spirit and the fact that all of this relationship with the eternal God is because of his grace. And we serve him out of love and we respect him. And it's a, it's a relationship where if I do something wrong, I don't want to. I don't want to hurt my friend, my savior. And if I do something that hurts him, I say sorry and I turn, not because of fear, but because of love. I turn back and apologize. I say sorry, I repent. And I make that relationship right and I go forward. It's just like in a marriage when I I only do this once every year or two. I hurt Leanne. It's very, very minimal, of course. But it <laughs> feels like every day almost sometimes. But when I, when I hurt the one I love who's closest to me, I need to humble myself and say sorry. And that's how it is with God. I have to humble myself and say sorry. And I have to turn and make the changes and go forward. And that is how our relationship is with Christ. And as we serve him and as we grow in this grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, that in turn 
is a beacon, is a picture to the world around us. And so in the midst of all that is going on, in the midst of all the turmoil that we see, we can be beacons of hope. We can be those who say, yeah, it is tough, and it's hard, and it will be hard, but we know. We know the future. We know the one who holds the future, and we know we can trust the one that holds the future. So let us be like the people that Peter is calling them to be. Remember, we're not the first who've gone through difficult times, and we, well, probably won't be the last. Okay? Others have gone before us as testimonies to God's faithfulness, God's goodness, God's strength, and he is going before us also. So in these times, let's be as what Peter says at the end. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we again thank you for this opportunity to be together here, uh, to just share as brothers and sisters in, in freedom, and to re remember that which you have done, and remember what you are doing. And I would pray especially for the body here in Bow Island, uh, the Free Church and others, that you would help them as they uh, are in the midst of a very busy time of harvest, of uh, the, the challenges that that brings to life and to uh, all the uh, things that are taking place, that you would keep them safe, that you would give wisdom and strength to those involved, but most of all, Father, that you would give hope and joy as they serve you here and as they impact around the world in different ways, and that uh, through their ministries, Lord, people would see Christ and people would come to Christ and people would know uh, hope for the future through you. In Jesus' name, amen.